Here's another percent abundance problem. It's involving chlorine. There's two different isotopes of chlorine in this example. It's possible for you later on to get an example with three different isotopes, but you're really, it's gonna be the same procedure where we're multiplying the masses by their respective percentages and then we add the total together. I want you to keep in mind chlorine 35. The mass is not exactly 35. We're just rounding it to the nearest whole number just for convenience in indicating which isotope we're talking about. But the masses we're gonna use for the problems are the most accurate ones, typically. If it's not given to you, if these numbers aren't given to you, you're gonna use these numbers, which it's fine. It's uh, You'll get a really close number anyways, but you're not gonna get it as close as you would want it if you're comparing it to the actual mass on the periodic table. Up here, you have the percentage how much of it appears in nature, how much chlorine, if you get a random sample of chlorine, is gonna be chlorine 35 versus chlorine 37, and these are your percentages. So think back on the percent, um, on the weighted averages video that I made involving your grades, how one is worth 70% of your overall grade and one is worth 30% of your overall grade. In this case, 75% of the chlorine found is chlorine 35 and 24% of the chlorine found is chlorine 37. So we're gonna be setting up this problem in the same exact way. Now, if I look at the periodic table, and that's what my PT is gonna stand for, it says that my um, mass of chlorine is 35.45 grams, and that's the value that I get from my periodic table then this should be very close to the answer that we get. So let's go ahead and plug in these values and see. Don't forget, I'm going to multiply my percent by my mass for each of these values. Oops, sorry, that's a multiplication symbol. And then, I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm gonna add up those values together. So I have uh, 34.9, uh, I'm going to go ahead and round it to 969, and I'm going to multiply that by the decimal equivalent of the 75.78%, so that gives me 0 0.7578. I'm going to add that to my product of 36 point, that's a decimal, uh, 966, so all I did was round and I'm gonna multiply that by 0.2422. So remember the setup here, we have our masses. So I'll go ahead and write that in, our masses. We always multiply our mass by the decimal equivalent of our percentage. And we're going to add those values up and it's going to give us our weighted average. So again, I have my small little calculator here. I'm gonna do just a little bit at a time. I expect you guys to work it along with me. And I get 24.995. I know I'm not quite rounding it the same. Actually, it's 20, uh, 26, sorry about that. I skipped a decimal when I looked, 26.4995, there we go. That's a little bit more like it, ignore that number. I forgot the six. I'm gonna add that to the next value I multiply together, 36.966 times 0.2422. That gives me 8.953, that should be good. I'm going to add that to my 26.4995. And if I round my final answer, what do you know? I get 35.45 grams. And since we're getting that straight from the periodic table, I can say grams per mole of chlorine. And I want you to notice that that is the same as uh, what I predicted I would get because that was from the periodic table of elements. I'm going to go ahead and highlight a couple times just to show how important that value is right there. So for any problem you do for this, 
your final answer should equal something that you would find from the periodic table. Just make sure you understand that. Um, and knowing how the problem is set up is going to be half the battle. So remember, you're always taking your mass, you're multiplying by the percentage, always taking your mass, multiplying by the percentage. And if there's a third isotope, you would do it again, and you would just add them all up just like you would before. It would be exactly the same.